My name is Mary Washington, and I'm a member of the Maryland General Assembly. My name is Joel Burns, and I serve on the Fort Worth City Council. I Tammy was first Baldwin, a member of the United States House of Representatives. Sure. I am a representative in the State House of Representatives. And I was just elected to the State Senate in the six years. I just was elected to my fourth term. I've been in office since September of 2004. Justice, and I am a state senator from Kansas City, Missouri. A newly elected member of Congress from the first district. I'm Anise Parker. I am the mayor of Houston. History is written by those who show up to lead. You know, I remember when Elaine Noble first ran for office in Massachusetts, and she had to have two state troopers with her at all time to protect her life. 20 years ago, there were a courageous few. In fact, only 49 openly LGBT elected officials serving at any level of government when the Victory Fund was founded in 1991. Our backs were to the wall, both politically and from a health standpoint. We really were just fighting tooth and nail against the most venomous anti-gay, anti-AIDS legislation. And it was clear to us that unless we started electing our own people, that we were never going to get progressive legislation passed. The energy was pretty amazing. We gathered in a small conference room in a Marriott hotel. And we talked about the idea, and no one doubted it. I knew the LGBT community had the resources, it had the motivation, and it had the talent to be successful. And I knew this was an idea whose time had come. So Terry Bean and Vic Basil and William Rayborn and myself uh, decided that it was important that we make sure that those who were willing to exhibit such courage uh, be given the resources to do so early. Our first endorsement was also our first win, and it was an African American running in the Pacific Northwest. Sherry Harris won a seat on the Seattle City Council in 1991, starting a journey of transformation, leaving a mark on the country, telling the story of who we are, taking our place at the table, realizing our American dream. 20 years ago when we founded Victory Fund, I don't think we could have imagined that um, one of the largest cities in America and the largest city in Texas, of all places, would have a lesbian mayor. I have raised the coolness factor of Houston, and uh, I, I'm happy about that. Seeing Anise Parker become mayor of the fourth largest city was a rather remarkable thing, and it, and it created so much hope for our community. One of the Victory Fund's earliest endorsed candidates was Tammy Baldwin, who got her start in local politics in the mid-1980s. Tammy Baldwin for Congress. She would go to on to become the very first education. openly LGBT candidate to win election to the U.S. Congress as a freshman and is now in her seventh term. She had really solidified the idea that sexual orientation should not be used as a wedge issue or a weapon. Not only does Don't Ask, Don't Tell damage the Today, lives, Congresswoman Baldwin is among the most high profile LGBT leaders in America. I think it's healthy for the democracy when our legislative bodies reflect America. And right now, they don't. Baldwin is among hundreds of candidates who've been trained, endorsed, and supported by the Victory Fund, resulting in more than 500 out elected officials serving today. There were almost 150, maybe more than 150 folks who this last cycle ran. And of that number, 65% of them, the ones endorsed by the Victory Fund, won. Compare that to the Tea Party, 32% of their candidates won. The number of candidates the Victory Fund endorses and the number of them that win is still a source of pride every year. Organizations like Victory Fund are willing to give you the financial support, um, the organizing and management support, uh, that you need to feel confident. And the ability to handle the inevitable tough questions. When I ran for mayor, there was an African-American minister of the largest African-American church in the city. He said, I heard you're very supportive of gay rights. And I said, oh, you know, I'm gay. He said, what should I tell my congregation? And I said, you should tell your congregation that they should respect the creation of God. This is how God created, created me, and they should respect the creation of God. He became a huge supporter and a great friend. To be brave, a person who's gonna be brave on being gay in Idaho, you're probably gonna be brave on some of the other tough issues too. Today, I serve in the Senate next to some of the same. LGBT elected officials are at the forefront of efforts to make America a freer, fairer country 
for everyone. There's a difference between advocacy and lobbying and working hard and actually being in the position to cast the vote. People like me create loving families. Their work isn't People just like changing hearts and minds. It's changing votes. It's changing the course of history. They said that I was a faggot and that I should die and go to hell where I belonged. I made comments at our Fort Worth City Council meeting. But the numerous suicides in recent days have upset me so much and have just torn at my heart. But things will get easier. Please stick around. After that happened and it started to go viral, the Victory Fund remained an ally and an asset to have in me putting forth a message that for those of us who are adults, it is our responsibility, not the responsibility of children, to end bullying in their schools. They need more Ennis Parkers. They need more Joel Burns. They need to see that they're not alone. Once these people get over their hate and their prejudice, we're going to bring such a gift to this country they have no idea. Two decades of success have built a foundation for the next generation of out leaders so that in the future it won't matter that a lesbian is the mayor of the fourth largest city in America where we never have the conversation about oh that's a lesbian candidate or this is the lesbian or gay first where we stop marking the milestones I'm not the gay senator um, I am the competent senator and their sexual orientation will be irrelevant and we'll have lots of people from our community everywhere in government as governments start to look a little bit more like the people of the nation. I mean, we have to, we have to do that to have a really good democracy. And I know that sounds kind of corny, but I, I really want the world to be a better place. Every time we achieve another victory, we open the doors for more young people to achieve their dreams. This model is a, is a genius model, in my opinion. It works because it delivers results. To see a United States senator stand up and address the crowd who's openly gay. I don't think the Victory Fund should stop until we have a president. Imagine that, the first gay president.